Hello fantastic people, today we'll be adding the damage indicators on top of the health system we built recently. Let's start by creating empty game object and calling it damage indicator. Because most of the UI components have to live inside a canvas, let's create one inside our object. Let's change its render mode to word space. This will make the canvas behave like a regular game object, so instead of being attached to the screen, it will be attached to a regular position in the word space, like for example our character. Then I'm resetting its position and changing its size to 0, 0. Inside of it I add text, text mesh pro. I'm changing the font size to something extremely small, like for example 0.5 of the unit. I'm also adjusting the alignment to make sure the text is centered correctly. Now we have to make sure that the wrapping is disabled and overflow is set to overflow. That will make sure that the text doesn't respect its own boundaries. In simpler words, we'll make sure that the text is not concatenated or will rewrapped. This allows us to change the width and height to zero. Now I double click on the text in the hierarchy to focus on it. We want the text to be always on the top, so there is small thing we have to adjust. We click on the canvas and add new sorting layer. Let's call it top. Once again we click on the canvas and this time change the sorting layer from default to top. Amazing. Now we'll change the text font. I used the Google fonts to find one that I really like. I downloaded it and imported it to Unity. In order to use it with TextMesh Pro we have to create font asset. I do that by clicking on the font and then in the right top corner on the three dots. I select Create TMP font asset. In the new pop-up I click Generate font atlas and save the file. Now I click on the text game object and change its font asset. Because we'll use it to indicate damage I change its color to red. Now I'm going to add some black outline. The result I'm getting by using the outline option is pretty ugly so I'm not going to use it. Instead I'm going to use the underlay. I use the dialate slider to set a value like 0.9. I notice that setting it to higher value causes some problems with clipping alpha channel. Then in the color setting I increase the alpha to maximum. Then I make the text bold and change the placeholder text. To make it float nicely I'm going to use rigid body 2D, so I'm adding it to the wrapper object. I want it to be a little bit dynamic so I change the gravity scale to 2. Now I create new script and call it floating message. We'll need two private fields, one for rigid body 2D and one for TMP text. Then let's create two fields to store the initial Y velocity and the range of X velocity. And then of course one more field to store the message lifetime. In the awake method we want to grab the rigid body from the game object and the TMP text from one of its children. Then in the start method we'll assign the initial velocity. For the x-axis we want to randomize it and for y-axis we want to use the constant value. And then we'll use the destroy statement with two parameters, first one the current game object and the lifetime after which the game object should be destroyed. And then we need a simple method to change the text on the TextMesh Pro component. Now let's assign the script to our damage indicator object and let's test it. I start the game several times to see how the message behaves and everything looks alright. Great. If you are using the health script from this tutorial, there is small change we'll want to do now. Basically the damaged and healed events provide information only about the new HP. If we want the system to be very versatile we should return a little bit more information. For example the old value and the actual damage. There are two ways we could do that. The simplest way would be to use another Unity event. One that allows us to specify more than one generic type. But this is not the best solution. Sooner or later you will forget the order of the arguments or something like that and this may lead to really crazy problems. Instead of that let's create our own struct. Let's call it health change arcs. Inside of it let's create four public fields. New value to store the new HP, old value to store the old HP, Attempted change, so the amount of HP that somebody tried to deal us or heal us with, and then a calculated property which calculates the actual change of HP. 
this is really all the information we have about the event. Maybe besides the sender, but let's forget about it for now. Now inside of our health script we change the arguments of the events from int to health change args. And of course before we invoke the events we have to create the arguments and pass them to the events instead of the HP. We also have to add extra method to our health bar which will allow us to set the value using the health change arcs instead of simple integer. Let's have a look at the health script in the inspector. The method of the HP bar was reassigned correctly, but the animator action disappeared from the damaged event. Let's add it. Let's check if everything works as expected and looks like everything's alright. I'm not sure if you realize, but our floating message could be used to generate any type of message, not only the damage indicators. So let's design also the rest of the solution with that in mind. We'll need a class message spawner. Inside of it let's create two serialized private fields. First one of type vector2 to tell us where in relation to the spawner we want the message to appear. And then the second one of type game object to store the actual message prefab and then public spawn message method. We'll want it to instantiate our prefab. But first let's create a small method to return the position where it should spawn. Now let's use that method inside the instantiate method and for rotation let's use quaternion identity. Then from that game object we want to get our message script. We could simply ask it for the floating message script but let's do something better. Let's create a simple interface, i in game message. It will have only one method, set message. Exactly the same one as our floating message script, which by the way can now implement the interface we created. Hmm, let's make sure the set message is public. Now back to our message spawner. From the object that we create, instead of getting the floating message, we'll be getting now the i in game message. This will ensure that the message spawner can work with any script that implements that interface, rather than just the floating message. And of course on the script that we get back, let's call the set message. Now we have a little problem. Our events provide us the health change arguments. So they are not really compatible with our spawn message method. To solve that problem, let's use the power of inheritance. Let's create a new class and call it damage indicator spawner. And now instead of extending the mono behavior as usually, let's extend the message spawner. Inside of it, let's overload the spawn message method with a version that accepts as a parameter the health change arguments. Inside of it, let's just call the regular spawn message and as a argument, let's pass the actual change changed to string. Now we have a method compatible with our event system. So we drag and drop the component on the character, set the initial point to 0, 1 to have the message appear over our head, and now let's grab the damage indicator from the hierarchy and drop it inside the project window. That will convert it into prefab. Then we can safely remove it from the scene and drag and drop it from the project window to our message prefab field on the damage indicator spawner script. Now we just need to create new action under the damaged event. And of course, as the action, we can select the spawn message method. Boom, works as expected. If you don't like the minus sign next to the value, you can simply multiply the value by minus one in the script or grab its absolute value using the mathf.apps. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and comment it and of course, subscribe to my channel. In the next tutorial we'll create the lives counter and that will conclude our mini series about the health system. I hope you're excited. And in the meantime, have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.